So we've already touched a little bit on the, how selecting a model tends to be one of the biggest and most important roles for an AI engineer in order for an application to be effective. We've touched a little bit on deciding between a closed source or an open source model. Is there anything else you'd like to cover on that or have we? I think, I think probably talking more about the open source parts of that and about something which uh, I love talking about, which is benchmarks and leaderboards and that stuff. Nice, nice, I, nice. I've, I've, I've really got into that. Um, so uh, yeah, the, the, uh, I, I personally, I found myself super overwhelmed when I first started trying to, to find the right open source model to use for a problem because there are just so many of them uh, and it's just so hard to, to figure out. Uh, aside from prototyping with all of them, uh, try and identify which one is going to be right for the task I'm trying to work with. Um, and of course, one of the first places you go is Hugging Face's open LLM leaderboard, which is just a treasure trove of useful information. But again, there's a lot to it. Uh, and so when you bring that up and you see all of this information, uh, one of the first things that, that I always do is I check the box to show the number of parameters in the table because you, you need to ground yourself on comparing apples and apples and seeing and seeing which sizes of models are being compared. And I also use the filter to sort of zoom in. And then you need to look at the different benchmarks and identify which of these benchmarks are going to be most relevant for the problem I'm trying to solve. And there are a lot of problems with benchmarks. There are a lot of known limitations. Uh, they, they can be gamed. There's uh, plenty of examples of, of contamination that's happened. That people have uh, sort of overfit to benchmarks, but still they give you a, a decent indication of what you're working with. And so they, they give you a good uh, grounding to, to pick a model. Uh, and probably my favorite benchmark, if I can uh, uh, go right into one of them, uh, there's, there's a benchmark called GPQA, which stands for Google Proof Question and Answers, which is, which is a really fun one. Uh, and they came up with this metric in a paper uh, just over a year ago. It was November 23 that they published it. And the idea is they wanted to come up with a metric that was far out there, something that's going to be, you know, the models won't be able to solve this for a long time. You know, we want to set a really high bar here. That, that, that was the thinking. Uh, so they, uh, they come up with GPQA. And the idea is it is 448 difficult questions in physics, biology, and chemistry that someone who's either taking a PhD or has a PhD should just about be able to solve. And in fact, if you put it to, to the people of that caliber, they tend to get 65% on average in the GPQA test. So 65% is like an expert human level. If you give it to, to normal people like me uh, without a PhD, uh, uh, and uh, you, uh, you say, okay, here's the thing, you can use Google. You can spend half an hour as, as much as you want, oh, just really? going through Google, figure out the answer to these questions, uh, then uh, people will score 35%, a wow. dismal 35%. And, and a key thing here is that, so when you talk about, it, we're not taking any PhD saying, you know, okay, somebody has a biology right, PhD right. and testing them on chemistry PhD no, questions. It's like these 448 hard science questions are segregated. When you give that 65% of PhD level humans, it's not just like, oh, this person has a PhD and therefore they're really smart and they can do all these questions. It's like, no, they can do the subset of science questions for their discipline. That's exactly right. That's exactly 65% right. of the time. 65% of the time. And, okay. and when this first came out, it seemed like that was a long way out. And then Claude 3.5 Sonnet came out earlier this year and it scored around 59%. People were just shocked. Mm -hmm. like, wow. Mm -hmm. Already it's approaching human expert level. And then a few weeks ago, the new Claude 3.5 Sonnet came out, and it's exactly 65%. Mm. It's on par with expert humanity. It's just, it's, it's outrageous. It's so spectacular. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I guess uh, it's a, no news to you, but O1 Preview, of course, shatters all these numbers. O1 Preview is above 70%. Uh, already, at, uh, it's above PhD level. In these yeah. kinds of subjects. And it's just so, the preview model. It's just the preview <laughs> model. And we believe that Orion is around the corner. That's what, what the rumors tell us. The new, tell me about Orion. Uh, Orion is, is apparently the code name for either GPT-5 mm. or maybe it will be O2. Uh, wow. Whatever whatever it's going to be. Apparently, the OpenAI's next model is codenamed Orion. In fact, I think that 
Most recent speculation is that people are starting to see diminishing returns from these models. There was an article in Bloomberg that was suggesting that, that uh, uh, maybe we won't be as blown away as, as we're expecting by the next OpenAI model. Um, and it's been somewhat surprising that Claude 3.5 Opus still hasn't come out. Uh, when 3.5 Sonic came out a, a, a while ago, we're still on 3.0 right. Opus. Uh, so we're wondering whether that's because it's not yet ready, not not at that level yet. Um, but anyway, the the, um, the next generation of models uh, is, I'm sure, going to push GPQA even I more. I completely forgotten about the Opus thing, because you're yeah. right, because it because the way that Claude does their sizings, you've got Haiku, which is their lightweight one, like kind of like a GPT-40 mini, and then Sonnet. And it just in my head, because I've been using Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and it's so great, and it does outperform Claude 3.0 Opus right. on so many tasks, I'd completely forgotten yeah. about that Opus, that that's kind of the bigger model, and we're still waiting on it. We are, we are. Uh, but people are saying a couple of months early in the new year is when we will expect Orion and the next Anthropic model, uh, and I'm sure that these benchmarks will be blown away yet again. Um, and then if you, if you look at the open source models on the Hugging Face leaderboard, you'll see that they are not at this level yet. Not, not hugely surprising. The, the, uh, I think the winning model right now, uh, and this changes all the time, is the Quen 2.5 model from Alibaba Cloud. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, that's the, the leader when it comes to GPQA. It's mm. scoring uh, about 22%. So it's not, not even close, not even at the, at the, at the me level. And yeah. some, some spellings here for our, I guess, all of our listeners, since we don't have words to show up on the screen in the video version either. So um, so Orion is not like an Irish last name. <laughs> 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 it's like uh, Orion's belt, O-R-I-O-N. And then this Quen uh, that you just mentioned from Alibaba is Q-W-E-N, like Gwen, but with a Q. And it's oh, Quen 2.5. Yes, the 32 billion version of it is the one that, that scores best in GPQA as of now, but these things change all the time, which is why it's well worth bookmarking uh, the Hugging Face LLM leaderboard. And I guess we'll be able to add some some bookmarks to the uh, some, uh, podcast notes. To the show notes, yeah, for sure. Lovely, because I, I have about eight or nine leaderboards bookmarked that I go to a lot. And these, these they're such an incredible resource. If you send us your eight or nine, we will put for them sure. in there. Or, you know, you can maybe create a little GitHub gist with your... Oh. <laughs> Nice. With your eight, and we could link to that. Your choice. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Figure it out. I'll, I'll send it to you. And uh, yeah, if, if I can uh, indulge me to go through another couple of metrics that I love, that are just, just of fun course, to mention some of, the, some of the benchmarks. So there's one that's called MUSA, M U S R, that you'll also see on, on the Hugging Face, uh, that stands for Multi Step Soft Reasoning. Uh, and again, this is another of these metrics. This is, this is now about, about thinking through difficult problems. Um, and uh, th there's a bunch of questions that are asked to models. The one that I enjoy hearing about the most is that they are given a thousand word short stories of a murder mystery. And they have to respond with who has the motive, the means, and the opportunity. That's fine. Which says, yeah, is that great? Uh, and so you'll see the results of, of Musa. And so if you're looking for reasoning capabilities, that's what you would look at. Um, then there's um, a benchmark called MMLU Pro. Uh, MM LU is a very well-known uh, metric that was used a lot for language understanding, um, but it was yeah. fairly massive well -known. multitask oh. language understanding. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it was it was criticised for that there was there was certainly some contamination and there was also ambiguity in the metric. Uh, but Hugging Face is now using one called MMLU Pro, uh, which fixes those problems and which is a better metric. And so, if you're looking for a model that can show understanding of language, then that's the metric that you would look at. Um, and then, then one more that's that's on there, and then uh, uh, then I'll stop with the metrics. <laughs> it's called uh, BB Hard, uh, and BB Hard, which stands for Big Bench Hard, is also uh, so. So this was another one that they came up with two years ago, and the idea again was that this would be testing for future capabilities for things which LLMs can't do today that one day we hope they'll be able to do. And it was in response to the fact that LLMs were, were getting into the 90s on all of the existing benchmarks. And one, one example, one of the categories of questions is about identifying whether text has sarcasm in it, oh. which, you know, that's a really clever, nuanced kind of test that as of a couple of years ago, LLMs really struggled with. Um, as of now, 
Uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet scores 93%. Wow. And that, yeah, uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. So already that this, this future capability is the present capability. Yeah, it's moving really quickly, which makes AI engineering or LLM engineering a super fun field. And also evidently creating all these jobs, uh, you know, rivaling the number of data scientists that we have job postings for out there. For sure. There is, there's a different leaderboard altogether on Hugging Face that not many people know about, which is unbelievably useful, which I feel like I'm doing a, a public service by, by, by telling people about it. And it's called the Hugging Face LM Perf leaderboard. 